Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name's Acacia. Today, oh boy, I'm nervous. Um, I've already done a part one Q&A about DID, and I will link that down below. These are all of the questions that I was asked in a private message, or I was asked in the last video about DID, but didn't answer. Um, now. So. Quick information for anyone who is new to my channel. Hi, my name is Acacia. I am 28 years old. I have... <laughs> I have DID and I have 52 distinct parts. Um, I live in a body that hosts 52 distinct parts and I function on a daily day basis and I make videos on YouTube talking about books mostly but I will also talk about mental health occasionally. Um, I do focus on trying to address um, the conversation of making mental illness more normal to talk about um, but also trying to make it so that somebody with my disorder DID can be seen as a friendly and compassionate and good person in society rather than a monster as we are so often betrayed in the media. So welcome. Um, I'm nervous. So if you don't see anything answered that you want to know about, go ahead and click down below with the original Q&A that I had about DID, um, the part one, I'm sure that that'll probably answer your questions. If it doesn't, go ahead and comment down below and let me know your questions there and I'll do another part eventually. So, do you know all your parts yet and... So, okay. Do you know all your parts yet? Um, no. Not even close. No, I don't. Um, I probably have communication with about 20 out of the 52. And I can communicate with them to the point where I can ask them what they need. Or I can ask them what they want. But I'm not at the point yet where I can fully communicate and get them to stop from controlling or taking over in certain situations. Um, I have come to the realization that I may never know all my parts and I may never get the chance to communicate with all of them and that's okay, but it, it's definitely a fact that I've come to realize. Um, meds. How do my meds work? <laughs> I am on several medications at this point and one of them is an antipsychotic. Um, I take it for hallucinations, auditory and visual. Um, I, even on that medication that I take, I still hear the voices of those parts, which means to me that they're not a hallucination. They're really a part of me. Um, the auditory and visual hallucinations have actually affected things like my driving and my experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I usually will take pictures of things with my phone to see if they show up in the picture, then they might be real, or if they don't show up in the picture, then they're fake. Um, I, I take meds for antidepressants as well, and I take sleeping meds for anxiety and PTSD. So I have four medications that I'm on right now that are mentally based and then the rest of them are all physical health. What and how do parts help you cope? Um, how do parts help you cope? So the job essentially of one of my parts is for them to be able to come out and take over when trouble or danger is afoot. That is their their core function. Um, I may be feeling a sense of threat or urgency while I am waiting for a cup of coffee and a man walks into the coffee shop and makes me nervous um, because he looks at me funny and I might switch. Um, or I might be home alone and hear a noise in the other room and I'll switch because I panic and I think that there's somebody in the house. 
So they help me cope by allowing me to get out of what I think of as a dangerous situation. But at the same time, they're really hindering um, because sometimes there is no danger and I don't need to switch. And now I have to spend an hour to an hour and a half, maybe three hours or a whole day not knowing what's going on and experiencing um, my life from an internal stance where I have no control or visual um, idea of what's happening. So that can be really, really traumatizing. Do you ever film with parts up front? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, they usually are co-conscious, which means that, um, I've explained it before, there's a, if your body is a car, the host is the driver, and then there are parts that sit in the passenger seat so they can see and hear everything that's going on, and if emergencies come on, they can grab the wheel. Um, there are the parts that are sitting in the back seat of the car that can talk to you and you can hear them and you can communicate with them, but their vision is a little bit blurred and they can't really see much. And then there are the parts that are in the boot um, or the trunk and they can't see or hear or feel anything. And then when they come up, they have no context as to what's going on. So when I switch and I lose consciousness, I end up in the trunk and I'm unable to see. So usually what will happen if I'm filming with parts up front is either I am in the passenger seat and I can sort of see and hear everything that's going on and tell them what they can and can't say, or I'm in the driver's seat and they are sitting with me and telling me things that I should say out loud or um, things that I can remember. So they do help me occasionally because there are times that I forget a lot of characters names in books but they tend to help me with that. Um, so does the back of the book to be honest. But um, yes I have filmed with other parts up front and it is really nerve-wracking and really scary but nobody seems to notice. Um, <laughs> you guys might have noticed occasionally. Um, right now I have two parts that are co-conscious and they are Amy and Lizzie B. Um, Amy is five and she um, and she tends to come out a lot. She is just really friendly and sweet and kind and loving and she just really wants to have fun all the time. So if I'm sad or I'm feeling tense, um, she'll come out to try and soothe the situation over. And then Lizzie B is just a very intelligent and um, thoughtful person who helps me kind of verbalize what I want to say in a more literate and uh, eloquent way. How do I read with all my parts? Very challenging. Um, I have to take about 15 minutes before I sit down and read to do some internal work and just kind of check everybody in and tuck all the parts in to have them go, um, basically have them go to the trunk of the car so that I don't hear them. Um, and even then, I still have a few of them constantly just chatting away. I can always hear somebody. Um, there's always a voice around me. So I read with a lot of notes and writing and um, I stop quite frequently. I read for six to eight hours every day, um, but I do stop quite frequently in order to take breaks and breathers to allow myself to kind of center again and get everybody back to quiet. Have you considered writing my story? I've considered it. Um, I've considered writing my story. I don't know if it's something that people would be interested in. Um, it's not a happy story. It's not, I mean, it's got some funny elements to it. Um, like when I have arguments with myself in the shower, but, um, yeah, I've considered it. I just don't know if there's a market for it or if there's any reason to write it. Is Acacia the dominant one? <laughs> 
Dominant is not really the word I would use. Acacia or myself, I am the host. Um, the body answers to my name and responds accordingly to my physical experience. Um, but dominant, no, because dominant implies that I have more control over the situation that I do. Um, I'm just the host, so I'm just the most commonly out. How many parts come out in a 24 hour period? Anywhere between two to 10 on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if we're talking co-conscious, then it can be anywhere from two to 20. Um, but if we're talking about like actually physically coming out and experiencing the day and I go into the trunk of the car, then we're talking like two to 10. So I usually on a given day will lose anywhere from an hour to 24 hours. Um, at my worst period, I've lost six months. Um, yeah, I think that's my worst. At, at my worst, I've lost six months to a year. Um, at my best, I've lost 20 minutes. How did I find out all the names? They had the names. Um, I didn't, a lot of them have to do with things from my past. Um, so book characters, movie characters, um, they've all kind of taken on the persona of somebody that they saw and thought that they would be able to help me in some way. But they all picked their own names. I don't know where the names come from. I have no control over the names and I just learn them as I learn them. Um, they'll introduce themselves to me in journaling. They'll introduce themselves to me in therapy sessions. Sorry, hold on. I'm feeling lightheaded. Um, I only have one question left, so I, I just need to get that done. Um, have I ever thought about integration? Yeah, of course I have. Um, it's the ultimate goal for my disorder is to have integration. Do I want it? I don't know. Um, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have the voices. I've had them since I was five. So I don't really have a memory of my life without them. Um, yeah, I... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about integration. It it feels foreign to me and like I don't want it. But yeah, that was the last question. Um, I'm feeling really lightheaded and I'm probably going to switch after this video. So I'm going to go um, and try and recenter myself because I don't want to switch on camera at this point in time. Um, Um, yeah, so if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, click that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, or quandaries, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. I will talk to you all in my next video. Bye.